Bible. I'm going to step over into another class that we've got called the Introduction to the uh, New Testament and the Old Testament. I forgot what I've called it. Old Testament and New Testament introduction. Basically, it's an introduction to the Bible. Introduction to the Bible. And last week, we spent about an hour going through the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and how they're different. So we'll have a little review now of uh, the last couple weeks of instruction. Everybody together, you can answer out loud. How many books are in the Bible? 66. How many books are in the Old Testament? 47. How many books are in the New Testament? 47. Very good. Is the kingdom of heaven physical or spiritual? Physical. Physical. Is the kingdom of God physical or spiritual? Spiritual. Can you touch the kingdom of God? Yes. The kingdom of God. No. Uh, the kingdom of God is within you. It is not carnal. It is not physical. It is spiritual. All right. I have a question. Question. Can you see the kingdom of God? Yeah. <laughs> ask Jesus. That's what to ask him. <laughs> He's got it nailed down. <laughs> a few times throughout the Gospels, Jesus says, "They that are such cannot see the kingdom of God. Cannot see the kingdom of heaven." Yeah, I've never seen it. Have you? Not, not in the obvious way. Yeah, no, not in the flesh. Because it's not physical. Other questions? Um, well, all together, starting with Genesis, we're going to go through the first 27 books of the Bible out loud. Saying it out loud helps you. Let me give you a little trick for memorizing things. If I read it, here's what it sounds like when I read it. Am I hearing anything? No. If I read it and I say it out loud, that means that I'm seeing it and I'm saying it and I'm hearing it. It gets in three holes in my face that help me to understand something. So if you can say it and see it, you can hear it too. It'll help you memorize something if you say it together. So let's start with Genesis all together. And we're going to go from Genesis all the way to Daniel. Ready? Genesis, Genesis. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Good. Good. One more thing that helps you memorize, even more so than uh, saying it, is writing it. When you can write something out, you see it, you say it out loud. Writing helps you memorize a whole lot. We'll go over how to memorize the Bible uh, in some later lessons. It's very important. But um, learning those books of the Bible is extremely important. If you don't know where they are and you don't know what they say, then you don't know the Bible that well. Honestly. The Bible is not a book you can uh, claim to love without knowing it. You've got to learn it. You've got to get into it. You've got to make it a part of your heart, a part of your mind. You want to make the Bible what your life is about. And that takes work. It definitely takes work. It takes time. It takes sacrifice. It takes commitment. It takes giving up what your flesh wants to do and doing what God wants you to do. So, for our broad overview. So we're going to do a big flyby of the Old Testament. Of the Old Testament. And how the Bible is about the second coming of Jesus Christ. We learned that last week, right? We went through the fact that Jesus Christ, when he was on this earth, was telling them, I'm bringing a physical kingdom. They rejected him, and he chose not to. And at the second coming, both the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God will be on the earth. But let's go back to the beginning. What's the very first book of the Bible? Genesis. Genesis. I'm going to quote a verse. To, well, I'm going to read a verse to you. Luke chapter 24 and verse 44. Luke 24, 44. Jesus says this. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. He said, in the law of Moses 
and in the prophets, and in the Psalms, concerning me. Three categories that God, that Jesus Christ says the Old Testament is broken down into. So the law of Moses is the first five books of your Bible. The law of Moses is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The prophets. Now we've broken the prophets down into the history and the major prophets and the minor prophets. But if you look at it, from Joshua all the way down, it is history, but it's a history of how God was sending prophets into Israel. Prophets show up in every single one of them. Samuel. Moses was a prophet. The Bible says Joshua was a prophet. Many people throughout the histories were prophets. So Jesus says the Old Testament is broken down into the law of Moses and the prophets, which covers Isaiah all the way down into Malachi, and in the Psalms, which I'm not positive that these are that. I don't know if Job fits into another one, but the way we break it down is that the Psalms are these books that we call like poetry, with Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. Now I want you to notice something very important that Jesus says. In the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms, he says, concerning me. Concerning me. That tells me that the Old Testament is concerning Jesus Christ. You can find Jesus Christ on any page of your Bible because the whole thing is concerning him. The whole thing is concerning him. You'll see throughout the first few chapters of the book of Acts, whenever the apostles or the evangelists would preach, sometimes it would say they opened the Old Testament and preached unto them Jesus, like Paul did that. Jesus even did that to two apostles after he rose from the dead. He showed them all the things concerning himself in the Old Testament. You know what that tells me? Jesus is all through that Old Testament. And you should be able to show someone from the Old Testament Jesus Christ. It's full of prophecies <coughs> about Jesus. The Old Testament. Now the theme of the Bible is the second coming of who? God. Uh, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. When the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God will finally be together on the earth during the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. So let's take a look through the Old Testament to see how that plan turns out, to see how it works. First, who is the first man created? What's his name? Adam. 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 Whose image is Adam created in? God. Good. Turn to Genesis 126. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis 126, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So who did Adam look like? God. He was made in his image. He looked like God. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. He didn't just look like God. He was the image of God. And he was made in the likeness of God. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every, cre um, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's Genesis 126. Look at Genesis 2, verse 7. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So Adam was made in whose image? God. And whose breath made him alive? God. Adam was in the image of God. He had breath from God. Adam, in uh, the book of Luke, chapter 3, and verse 38, is actually called the son of God. <coughs> Who was Adam's daddy? God. Who made him? God. 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 Was Adam the son of God? Yes. Adam was the son of God. Now, it's a little s. Adam was not Jesus Christ. Adam was not God. But it says he was the son of God. You know why? Because God made him. That was his father. Adam was the son of God. Now, can you think of anyone else who is the image of God? 
Christ. Jesus Christ. Adam was in the image of God. Jesus Christ is the image of God. You can write these down. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. It also says it right there in uh, Genesis 2. He said in our image. There you go. That's more than one, isn't it? Yeah. Our image. Let us make man in our image. That was 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. It says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So we've got Adam was made in the image of God. And it never says, I might have misspoken a minute ago, it never says that Adam is the image of God. It says he was made in the image of God. Jesus Christ is the image of God. That was 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 3 and 4. Next, we've got Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, which says, Colossians has fallen out of my Bible. Colossians 1, 15 says, who is, talking about Jesus Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? And Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. There's no question that Jesus Christ is the image of God. It says, who being the brightness of his glory, this is Jesus Christ is the brightness of God's glory, and the express image of his person. So you say, what does God look like? If God was made flesh, what would he look like? Jesus Christ. Exactly like him. You know why? The word was made flesh. Jesus Christ is the word. Jesus Christ is the express image of God's person. You say, what does God look like? Jesus Christ. If you wanted to know what God looked like, look at Jesus Christ. If you wanted to know what God looked like, who else could you look at? Adam. Adam. Was Adam made in God's image? Good. Adam and Jesus Christ were both in the image of God. They both looked like God in his likeness. Adam, the son of God, according to Luke 3.38, was identical, identical, looked the same as Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus looked different before he died and uh, after he rose from the dead. And we've talked about that in church before. After Jesus Christ rose from the dead, Jesus didn't have any blood. He just had flesh and bone. Before Jesus Christ, or before Adam fell, I just about guarantee you, he didn't have any blood in him. Just about. What? What verse in Colossians? Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. I'm sorry, 15. 15. 15. 15. Yeah. Colossians 1, 15. So Jesus Christ is the image of God. Adam was made in the image of God. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. That was Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Sorry? This is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45, and it says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, the last Adam, that's another name of Jesus Christ, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Those two were so similar that he's called the first Adam and he's called the last Adam. They're both the son of God. They're both in the image of God. 
Adam was made in the image of God, which looks like Jesus Christ. As the Son of God, we talked about this last week, Adam was given dominion. You remember that word in Genesis 1? He was given dominion over the physical earth. That was the kingdom of heaven. And he was given dominion as the Son of God over the spiritual kingdom of God. In Genesis 1.26, God gave Adam dominion over the physical kingdom. God's plan was for Adam and Eve to populate the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. What did he tell Adam to do right away? God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God wanted Adam and Eve to populate, to replenish, to multiply, and to fill the earth with little Adam and Eve babies. So did they? Did that happen? Did they, pop, did they do what God said? Did they get to fill the earth with perfect little Adam and Eve babies? No, and have no, dominion? No, no, no. no. Adam was made in the image of God, wasn't he? Right. Turn to Genesis chapter 5, verse 2. <coughs> Adam was made in the image of who? Uh, Adam was made in the image of God. The image of God. Adam had a son named Seth. Probably his third son. He had Cain and Abel. That didn't go so well. He had another son named Seth. Look at Genesis 5-2. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own image. I'm sorry, in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. Whose image was Seth in? Adam's. Adam's. Why wasn't Seth in the image of God? Because he wasn't God's son. He wasn't God's son. Another reason. God didn't create him. God didn't create him. Adam fell. Adam sinned. Adam lost the image of God when he chose to die spiritually by taking the fruit. Adam was no longer the perfect likeness and image of God. He lost it. And his son wasn't given the image and likeness of God. He was given the image and likeness of his human sinful father, Adam. Was Adam's father sinful? Yes. No. Was Seth's father sinful? Yes. 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 Good. <laughs> The only two men, now you'll be told this, that's all right, Brother Joe, absolutely all right. The only people in the Bible, the only two people in the Bible who are in the image of God are these two right here. Now you'll probably be told at most churches that you were made in the image of God, that man was made in the image of God. No. Yes, it's true. Adam was made in the image of God. Every man after Adam was made in the image of Adam. Fallen, sinful Adam. And you and I do not bear the image of God. Not today. Not today. In our flesh, we don't bear the image of God. And the only way that we now bear the image of God is because we're in the image of God. Our flesh is no longer in the image of God. Adam fell and lost God's image. So, when Adam was created, he was king over both kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. When he sinned, he lost the spiritual kingdom of God. Remember, last week we asked this question. He said, In the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. Did Adam die that day? Yes. Physically? Yeah. No. Physically? No. no. He lived hundreds of years. 900 years. 900 some years. He didn't die physically, but did he die that day? Yes. He did. He died spiritually. He died spiritually. According to Genesis 3, 17 through 19, God did not take away the kingdom of heaven. In Genesis 3, 17 through 19, Adam had already fallen. He had messed up, and God was talking to him about it. And he says this, Unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, 
and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Here's the problem. Because he sinned, cursed is the ground for thy sake. I lost it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Adam messed up big time. Was he taken out of the world? No. Was he killed right away? No. Was he told you're not allowed to garden and have dominion? No. no. He was told it would be a lot harder than it was going to be. Sweat. You ever dealt with thorns? Yep. You ever dealt with putting one of your family members in the dust? You can thank Adam. You can thank Adam. Adam lost the spiritual kingdom of God, but he did not lose the physical kingdom of heaven. According to Romans chapter 5, verse 12, when Adam sinned, sin entered into the world. It says, for as by one man sin entered into the world, in Romans 5, verse 12. After Adam sinned, the next major world event was, think about it, what happened, yeah, what is it? Blood. The flood. More things happened. Adam's sons had babies and people populated and multiplied. Before the flood, there were probably more people on earth than there are today. I can just about guarantee it. You know why? People were living 900 years having 900 years of babies. Yeah. And then their kids were living 900 years having 900 years of babies. I don't know if you know how multiplication works, but it's fast. It's very, very fast. So about 1,600 years passed between Adam and and the flood. God promised Eve a seed, right? He told her, He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God promised that Eve was going to have a seed. And Satan, as we've talked about before, kept trying to destroy the seed. He kept trying to destroy the seed. And in Genesis chapter 6, Satan was behind a plan for... Uh, angels, as we've talked about, angels to come down and try to corrupt the seed of men by sleeping with women and having babies that were half angel, half men. And they were great men, men of renown, and there were giants in the earth in those days. Satan was trying to corrupt the seed so that God's word could not be fulfilled. So God destroyed the earth with a flood. And other than Adam and the eight souls that, I'm sorry, other than Noah and the eight souls that were on the ark, every living thing on the earth that breathed through its nostrils died. Everything that breathed through its nostrils died. Now that's harsh. Imagine if everyone on the world today, and I'm sure it was more people than there are today, but imagine if everyone on the world today just died, just like that, within a year, they all died. Probably within you know a couple days, they were all dead without water, and then God left the water on the earth for a long time. He got the job finished. He made sure it happened. If the rain was falling, it was probably just a couple minutes. Could have been just a couple minutes. You ever drowned before? I haven't. Uh -huh. Wouldn't be fun. And it's not. it doesn't take long for a man to drown. when he, You run out of steam really fast. And I'm sure it'd be really easy to drown when the water's coming from above, and it's coming from below, and it's raining. And you've probably been running like a madman up a mountain trying to get to the high, pole, to the high ground. No. God killed everyone on the earth except for Adam and the eight souls that were on the ark. And... When Noah, Noah and the eight souls that were off the ark. When Noah got off the ark, I want you to pay attention to something here in Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. When Noah gets off the ark, God says something very interesting to Noah. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Does that sound familiar? Yep. Who did God say that to before? Adam. Now he's giving it to Noah. Noah. The rule over the reign, the dominion over the kingdom of heaven doesn't end with Adam. God passed it on to Noah. And through verse 7 there, God gave Noah the same commission over the kingdom of heaven, but not the kingdom of God. From Adam's fall until Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God was not on the earth. But the physical kingdom of heaven was on the earth. And we'll see as we study later on that the story of the Old Testament, particularly the story of Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 12, a man shows up named Abram, 
God gives him the covenant and a nation. And God gives that kingdom of heaven to the Jews. And the last half of the book of Genesis and Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy is God establishing the nation of Israel as his chosen people who would reign over the kingdom of heaven on the earth. The kingdom was given to Israel. And uh, the story of the Old Testament is a very, very beautiful thing. Israel was small, and God chose them because they were small. <coughs> Israel was despised, and God chose them because they were despised. They were the least among the nations, and God chose them anyway. A few times, he gives a few different reasons why, but I can tell you that the way God works in, I think it's 2 Corinthians 1, maybe 1 Corinthians 1, God likes to choose the small man. God likes to choose the guy who's not wise, the guy who's not mighty, the guy who's not strong, so that when God gets the job done, no man can take credit for it. Right. And God chose Israel because they were small. Right. So, don't be ashamed of being small. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Small in any way. So, the book of Genesis. We're going to go through now an overview of what the Old Testament is about, what you can learn in it what we'll look forward to learning. We're going to go through some of these books verse by verse, but if we go verse through, by verse through all of these books, we're going to be here for about 15 years, unless you want to start meeting seven nights a week. That's up to y'all. I'll make myself available if we need to. So, the first book of the Bible is Genesis. Now, let's talk about some of the people that we'll meet in Genesis. Who's that first character that shows up in the book of Genesis? Ah, no, trick question. In the beginning... God. God. God is the first person who shows up in the Bible. In the beginning, God, what did he do? He created. He created the heaven and the earth. And Genesis chapter 1 is how God created the earth in six days. And the seventh day, God rested. rested. Good. In Genesis chapter 2, we get more detail on Adam, and we get detail on a land called Eden. Eden is a, a region or a nation, and there's a garden in Eden. Adam was lonely. God said, it is not good that man should be alone. Therefore, I will make him help meet for him. And what does God give him? Eat. Nope. God gave him animals. <laughs> First, God gave him animals. And apparently that wasn't enough. And then God gave Adam Eat. Eve out of his rib. rib. Good. You all know the Bible. In Genesis, God gave Adam Eve. It was wonderful. It was a marriage. God established marriage as the first thing, I mean, today, he made the heaven and the earth, obviously, and the first lasting human institution that you see today, we're married, there's married couples all around here. You know why? Because God established marriage, and it's going to be around until the end. God loves marriage. God honors marriage. God wants you to uh, honor him in marriage if you're married, and uh, if he doesn't want you to be married, it's still a picture. God gave marriage as a picture of the union of between his son and himself and between the church and his son. Marriage is a wonderful, beautiful thing. In Genesis chapter 3, something terrible happens. Adam and Eve have been living perfect in a garden. No sin, no conscience, no guilt. They've never done anything wrong. And God told them one thing that they couldn't do. They couldn't eat of the tree, of the knowledge, of the good and evil. And who messed up first? Eve. Eve. Who convinced her to mess up? The serpent, right. In the New Testament, it says it was Satan. He beguiled Eve through his subtlety. And we'll talk more about that later. There's a lot of things that you can learn about the Old Testament in the New Testament. The New Testament has a lot of details about the Old Testament that you don't see in those passages. So, Eve took of the fruit first, and then she gave to her husband, and he ate it, right? From that point, immediately, they both knew something. Their eyes were opened, right? Yes. They knew they were naked. They knew they were naked. They realized, we messed up, I need a covering. I need a covering. And from the very beginning, right when sin showed up, what did God give them? They needed a covering. What did he give them? Leaves. Coats of skins, right? What does it say? Let's look. Let's look and see what it says. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21. It says, And unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Let me ask you a question. Where do coats of skins come from? Animals. animals. When you cut off the coat of a skin, is it nice and clean and pretty? No. What comes out of an animal when you cut the skin off? Blood. blood. You know what God shows from the very beginning? You blood. need blood for a covering. Blood has to be shed to give you a covering. 
right from the very beginning, God gives you a picture. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Up until they sinned, Adam and Eve had never seen death. I don't think. I don't think. I know they only ate of the trees of the garden. That was food for them. And the herbs of the field were food for them that God gave them. They had never had to kill an animal and eat it. I doubt they had ever seen bloodshed. They had to see an animal die. That was a picture. And Adam passed that picture on to his sons. Because you can see that when Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve's sons, were going to give a sacrifice to God, one of them, Abel, gave a sacrifice that God accepted. What did he give? Of the first of his flock. I think it was a lamb, does it say? That's going to be in Genesis 4. It says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. We'll talk about this more later, but Cain and Abel, I believe, were twins. Twin brothers. Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. So Abel brought the firstling, a sheep, a sheep, a lamb. And he killed the lamb and sacrificed it to God. You say, why in the world would somebody do that? His daddy showed him. Or God showed him. Somebody told Abel, you need to kill an animal to sacrifice it to God. That's how God's pleased. Cain's offering was not accepted. You know why? Because the ground was already cursed. The ground was cursed. There was no blood. Where was the blood? Where was the blood? From the very beginning, there was a picture given to man. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. What is that a picture of for you and me? Jesus Christ. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, sin cannot be cleansed. There can be no justification without the blood of Jesus Christ. There can be no perfect human without him being covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. God gave that as a picture to the saints in the Old Testament so they would know without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And that's Genesis 4. You have the story of Cain and Abel. Sad story. Cain murders his brother. He doesn't like that God accepted his sacrifice, and he kills his brother. And Cain is cursed. He's given a mark so that men, when they looked on Cain, would see who it was, and they would know who it was, and know I'm not allowed to murder that guy, or God will make my life awful. So Cain and Abel doesn't work out for Adam and Eve. They wanted to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and it didn't work out. They've got one dead son, and they've got one cursed son. I don't know if you've ever felt that way, but I know plenty of people throughout history have. I got a dead son, I got a cursed son, what kind of parent am I? Well, they had another boy named Seth, and the Bible says that Adam and Eve had other sons and daughters. They didn't just have those three kids, but they named, the third named son was Seth. And Seth had the image of God, right? And in Genesis 4 and 5, you can see the story of uh, Seth and his children, and how old they got. That's where you can find Enoch who walked with God. And that tells the story all the way down to Noah. Genesis chapter 6 through 9 is the story of Noah. The story of Noah, the flood. And that first nine chapters of the Bible covers 1,600, I think it's 1652. I think that's the number. About 1,600 years of history in just nine chapters. A whole lot of time goes by. And then... In chapter 10 of Genesis, we have the sons of Noah. They all multiply, and God gives uh, Noah. God, Noah has these three sons from the Lord. Excuse me, I'm trying to check the time. Noah has these three sons from the Lord. Can anybody tell me the three names of the sons of Noah? Shem, Ham, and Japheth. There you go. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Those are, I keep saying Adam, don't I? Those are the three sons of Noah. Noah. And Shem, Ham, and Japheth, all three wind up in three different places. Their, them and their descendants all go in three different directions. So I want to show you something. You got, here's the Mediterranean Sea, and I am no artist, and I apologize for what you're about to witness. But here's the Mediterranean Sea, and you've got, um, Israel is right here. There's Israel. Right in that section. Over here is where you've got Egypt and 
Uh, up north, you're going to have Turkey. In the Bible, that's called Asia Minor. And up here, you've got Europe, the continent. Down here, you're going to have Africa. So what does that leave over on the other side? Asia. Asia. You got three different continents in three totally different directions, and each of those is divided by bodies of water. That's water there, that's water there. Over here, Europe and Asia are divided by a massive mountain range and some water down here. So these are three different continents. Noah, when he gets out of the boat, when he gets out of that ark, he has three boys, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and they all three are told to go and populate the earth. That is what God wanted them to do. And he told them to spread out. He said, I want you to go and multiply the whole face of the whole earth. He wanted them to spread out. Don't stay together. Spread out. So what did they do? Who comes over here to Asia? Shem. Shem, and now Asia, remember, uh, in the Bible, is this whole area. You got basically... All of this over in that direction is Shem. Who goes to Africa? Ham. Ham. And he doesn't just stay in Africa. Ham's descendants also find themselves up in here. Later, they're called the Canaanites. The Canaanites wind up in Israel, and those are children of Ham. In Europe, where most of you and me come from, we have this man named Japheth. Japheth. Now, let me ask you a question. Which one of these three men is superior? Japheth. No? Japheth. No? Ham. Shem. Shem. Now, we'll be honest. Every man is sinful. Is the white man, Japheth's descendants, any better than Shem? Any? Are we better than Asians? No. Are Asians better than us? No. Are we better than the black no. descendants of Ham? No. Are they better than us? No. Where in the Bible does it say that the white man is better than the black man? It doesn't, does it? Who was all their dad? Noah. Are we all descendants of Noah? All right, I just wanted to see. <laughs> I want to make sure. I want to be very clear. There are differences between the races, for sure. They have different colored skin. In the Bible, God wanted them to separate. In the Old Testament, God told them, I want you to be apart. In the New Testament, God changed. He changed. He changed the way he wanted men to work. In the biggest way, he gave them Jesus Christ. And he said, yeah. you're no longer Jew, you're no longer Gentile, you're not a white guy, you're not a black guy, you are in Christ. That's the biggest way he changed. In the Old Testament, he told Jews, descendants of Shem, to slaughter the Canaanites, the descendants of Ham. He wanted them massacred. He wanted them, because of the wickedness that they did in and around here, he wanted them destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah, descendants of Ham. They were evil, they were wicked. You know who else is evil and wicked? The descendants of Shem. You know who else is evil and wicked? Daniel Cannon. Everyone else who came from Japheth. No one race is any better in God's sight. No one race is any worse in God's sight. God hath made, I don't want to misquote it, in Acts chapter 17. In Acts chapter 17, verse 26. Paul says this about God, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds, listen, the bounds, like boundaries, of their habitation. So in the Old Testament, God appointed two things, the times and the bounds. That means at different times, there are going to be different boundaries. But God established boundaries, and in the Old Testament, he wanted Japheth to stay away from Shem, and Shem to stay away from Ham, and Ham to stay away from Japheth. He wanted them separate. A lot of American racism came from the Old Testament. Blacks should never hang out with white people. Get those Asians out of my country. That came from the Old Testament. And we will see in the New Testament... God changed the way he wanted us to be. And something you and I should remember is that, like we talked about before, God is a racist, and he chose Israel above everybody else, and he loves Israel more than all the other nations, and that you and I are Gentile dogs. Right. We are dogs. Right. You know what else you should remember? Even though we're different, you and I are different. I'm looking at people, all of us probably have a mix 
of all three of these. We might be Japheth dominant, but we probably have a mix of all three of these in us. You could probably find some of that other, some of those other races in us. I want you to remember something. These three men were brothers. They were not enemies. They did not hate one another. They were brothers. And there are tendencies. The older brother wants to take care of the younger brothers. That's how it goes. The Bible says, blessed be the Lord God of Shem. So in Shem, you're always going to find the major world religions that actually last. Japheth, us, we make up stupid religions like Mormonism. <laughs> Dumb stuff that makes no sense. Shem makes up the good religions like Buddhism, the things that actually stick and last. Confucianism, the things that people actually want to follow. Every one of the races has different tendencies. We look different. We act different. You still have to treat anyone of any other race the way God tells you to treat one another. That's right. God hath made of one blood all nations. One blood. Now we have different genes. We have different tendencies. We have different characteristics. But we all have the same blood. They're a man just like you and I are a man. And when anyone of any one of these races walks into this church... You ought to give them every ounce of love that you give to anyone else in the body of Christ. Amen. It doesn't matter what color their skin is. Yeah. You know why? Because even though you and I were dirty, filthy, Gentile dogs, God took us in. That's all we are. Remember that. Don't be prideful. Don't think. I don't know the background of any of you. I know that in the South, when I was growing up, I was exposed to an awful lot of Southern white nationalism where you were taught white people are better than black people, white people are better than Asian people. Is that true? No, what it is is evil. It right. is wicked and it is wrong. It is evil, wicked, and wrong. Genesis chapter 10. We've got Ham, Shem, and Japheth. They go in different directions. God tells them to spread out. He wanted them to multiply upon the face of the whole earth. And then in Genesis chapter 11, something goes bad wrong. God told them to spread out, right? Yeah. So what do they all do? Hey, I think we should hang out. Let's all hang out right in here. So they all stick around, they come together, and they make a city and they make a tower called Babel. Babel. What's the first thing wrong with Babel? God told them to spread out and they came together anyways. The point of the tower was, it said, a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. There's a lot of studying you can do on that, and we'll learn more about that later on, but the point was they were trying to get to heaven, they were trying to reach the spiritual world they were trying to reach the heaven without God. without God without God there's a lot more involved in that but they were trying to get to heaven without God the tower and you know whether or not they got to heaven doesn't matter the problem was that God said spread out and they did they stuck together and they made that tower that's Genesis chapter 11 and then it tells the descendants of Noah Shem who is Asiatic who lives in Asia the Israelites come from Shem and it tells the story from Noah all the way down to a man named Abram. Abram. A-B-R-A-M. Abram. And Abram, that we'll see, we'll get started on Abram. Excuse me. We'll get started on Abram next week. Abram is given a covenant from God. God deals very specially with this man named Abram. He calls him out of a land called Ur of the Chaldees is where he is uh, from. And he calls him out unto a land... God said, which I will show thee of. So God called Abram out of this Ur of the Chaldees and brought him over here into Canaan land. And he winds up in Egypt a little bit. And finally he lands in Canaan. And God makes it clear to that man, Abram, that he was going to inherit a piece of land. He gave him a piece of property that looks about like this. And he said he was going to promise that land to Abraham. And he gave Abraham a promise of a blessing. And he gave Abraham the promise of a seed that was going to multiply like the stars of heaven for multitude. God gave Abraham a covenant. And we'll talk more about that as it goes on. Abram was a Hebrew. And that's where you get the word Hebrews from uh, Abraham's, I think it's grandpa or great-grandpa named Eber. The Hebrews. And uh, Abraham was given a promise. Next week, we'll look at the promise that God gave to Abraham. So I just spent probably 30 minutes talking about the first 11 chapters of Genesis. There's 50 chapters in Genesis. We'll speed up as we go. That Bible is so rich and full of things 
that you and I need. We absolutely need. And another thing I always want to repeat, I always want to reinforce this, I want to rehash it as much as I can. It's good to know the overall story, and it's good to be able to get up and you know tell what the Bible's about in general, that's fine. And you notice when I teach, I really want to try to quote as much Bible as I can because me saying words of my own are not even one billionth as valuable as me quoting one word from God. Every single word in Genesis 1 through 11 is the most powerful thing you'll ever find in this universe. Every single word in that Bible is pure. It's lovely. It's wonderful. You got to love it. Hang on to it. So I will go ahead now and give you the questions for your quiz next week. It'll be a little easier. Question for your quiz next week. You can get something ready to write it down. And then we'll have whatever questions that you've got. And then we can go home. So, question number one will be, what is our final authority? The word of God. The word of God is our final authority. Good. God's word. Question one, what is our final authority? The word of God. Question two. Is every English version of the Bible the word of God? Is every English version of the Bible the word of God? No, is the answer. No. Question number three. What two men in the Bible are in the image of God? Adam and Jesus Christ. Good. What two men in the Bible were made in the image of God? Are in the image of God. Adam was made in the image of God. Jesus Christ is the image of God. What two men bear the image of God in the Bible? Adam and Jesus Christ. Abraham. Say what? The second question? The third question. What two men in the Bible bear the image of God? Adam and Jesus. Yes. Lastly, we're going to take a break on the books of the Bible. Now, we will get through all the books of the Bible, and what I want you to do this week is try to learn them. Don't quit trying to learn them. Go over the ones you've already learned. Do not lose what you have memorized. But what we're going to do for memory this week is just a simple verse. It will be question four. It will be quote. So write it down. It will be Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. you got one verse to memorize, you can do it. Absolutely can do it. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. It says, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. Any questions about that quiz? No. Okay. Any questions about our lesson? Any questions about the King James Bible or questions about the kingdom of God, Adam, Noah? Good. Yes? That one be Okay. Here's a little bit. Okay. Yep. They were building a tower in Babylon. At Babylon, yep. Babylon. They were each heaven. So they thought that, well, that heaven was right there. I mean, could they see it back then? Is the reason why they were building the tower? I don't know. I don't know if they could see it. I don't think so. The, the heavens should have looked the same as they do today. You look in the night sky and it would be black and they could see sun, moon, and stars in the, in the sky just like you and me. The heaven has been the same since Babel. We'll look more in detail onto why. Uh, if you go into downtown Carthage, you'll see something interesting. We just saw it today while we were down there. You're pulling, going east on 2427. You pull up to the old courthouse and what do you see right there? You see a big tower, right? It's called an obelisk. What an obelisk is, it's shaped just like this, isn't it? Tower just like that, right in front of the, the courthouse. You recognize that? Mm -hmm. 
Obelisks come from old time Babylon. Now, you find them in Egypt, you find them in uh, all throughout the land of Israel in archaeology. What an obelisk is, I'll save you the gory details, but an obelisk is a way to worship Satan. It is uh, trying to get Genesis chapter 6 back in the world. Devil worship. Worship of Satan. Worship of Nimrod. Worship of the Egyptian god Ra. And uh, if you go to Washington, D.C., you'll find a big old tower shaped exactly like that called an obelisk. We call it Washington's Monument. You'll find it in just about any city around the world. It's a little obelisk because Satan is really good at convincing men to worship him. Men have always been trying to build towers whose top may reach unto heaven for good reasons. And we'll talk about those reasons another time. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, it says in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. It says God created the heaven yeah, and the, the earth. earth. Yeah? He says, in the beginning, God. I don't know what he was doing. But I can tell you, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So there was no darkness, it was light. God, you know, God is not bound by time. We don't we can't wrap our heads around what he was doing before then. If there's some if if you want to know, it'll be in the Bible if there's an answer. I'm not sure what he was doing. Being holy. All right, any other questions? All righty. Thank you so much. Uh, Brother Jimmy, would you mind closing us out in prayer? Thank you. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. Lord, Lord, we appreciate Brother Daniel giving his time, Lord, to come and teach us. Lord, help us to learn more about you, Lord, and your word. Lord, now we pray that you would go with us, get us home safely, Lord, and bring us back at our next appointed time. Lord, all these things we thank you for in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. 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 Amen.